What if I told you that no matter who you are, you can enjoy D&D? You know that nerdy game where a bunch of nerds sat around a table and fought imaginary monsters? Yeah, that. What if I told you that you could, even if you're a party frat boy, a quiet librarian, or even just someone who enjoys decorating their house? To you, all you may know of is this heavy stat-based boring combat or typical enters a dragon cave and finds a loot type fantasy, but have you ever been with your party in a meeting with a king, going on about epic quest this and chosen one that, and being like, that's an expensive looking necklace he's wearing. I'm gonna try and use Mage Hand to steal that right from his neck without anyone noticing. Have you ever rolled a natural one, accidentally garroted the king, and thrown the entire kingdom into chaos as you and your party yell at each other all the way to the docks trying to fight your way through before making a triumphant escape? What about all the spells that allow you for weird and wonderful customization, like spiritual weapon? Want a floating lollipop for a weapon? You got it. Want a familiar? You got it. You want to choose your own instrument and use it in battle? Pick a bard! One of these days I'm gonna roll a max strength orc bard who carries around a grand piano on his back. It's gonna be amazing. What about realizing that your character doesn't even need to fight, and that your character's proficiencies and ingenuity can solve problems and avoid fights, allowing you to contribute to your group in your own unique way? What if I told you that no matter who you are, you could pick up this book, and you could still find something to your fancy? I love these, I love these, these books, because it's all like, it's all like spectacle and like, and like like high fantasy and everything and then but if you if you look at the front cover for too long all you see is oh it's all sticky <laughs> sorry so i have this friend uh we used to be the closest friends back in like 2011. us and a couple of others spend a lot of time in a minecraft server and we always had a lot to talk about but Something people don't tell you when you get older is your interests constantly diverge. Not just where you are and what you're doing. I'll never forget this moment uh, when some of us left high school and went away and he came on Skype like, we're coming online every day and we're talking every day. It was true for a time, but Minecraft eventually got boring. He actually got me into League, but his internet could never really keep up, and I don't think he was ever really particularly suited for competitive games anyway, but he became kind of a history and culture buff anyway, and plays things like Total War now. We did still get into calls every day, but it was around that time where we'd more just sit around for literal hours of silence unless we were watching something like Legend of Korra or Game of Thrones. And after a time, we stopped altogether. I think we both knew it was pointless, but it was kind of sad. As you can guess, we're actually able to hold decent conversations and even meet up again, and it's because of D&D. But what was it that Minecraft and D&D had that League and Total War don't? As I said, even if someone doesn't like video games or geek culture at all, they can still get into D&D too. But why? Maybe it's their spell names that are so stupidly uncreative that anyone can understand them. In my little branch of game design, we use an engagement system. There are eight or so known engagements, sometimes called aesthetics, that are the heart of what makes something entertaining. Each of them has their own requirements to pull off effectively. One of my own additions to this theory, among many, is that each person has alignments. Sometimes people enjoy one engagement more than others, sometimes they're completely numb to them. The theory is that D&D is so broad in its engagements that anyone can find something they align with. And the reason we know there are underlying engagements is because there are hobbies and passions that seem totally separate, but there are companies and products that appeal to the overlap. If you're a typical closet nerd who does nothing but stay in a dark room and play games, you might think someone who likes interior decorating is totally alien to you. But there are things like anime figures and even companies like Displate that print beautifully modern but also subtle designs for a more nerdy demographic that cares about making their house look good and professional to normal people, but also allows them to express themselves. Ah, did you catch that? Self-expression, that's a core engagement, and when you set out with a goal in mind, to, i.e. to make your house look good, that's a challenge engagement. That that's uh this this isn't like a this isn't like a sponsor or anything. That's 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 not that's not product placement. We're not so different. If you're one of the people who spends hours on character customization, you're not too different from the mother who fills her house with all the things she thinks represents her. 
Sometimes all it is is a matter of perspective. Perhaps you haven't even considered that you could use a space on your wall to be an extension of yourself. You could have a house, sure, but what if it was your house? When you want to get an interior decorator into D&T, don't tell them about the combat, fighting dragons on mountaintops to take their loot. Tell them about character customization, lore, personality, everything. Show them that they can even make a character with a theme in mind. I once made a waiter who had all his spells themed around a wizard restaurant he used to work at before it got burnt down. He had mage hand for carrying plates, chill touch for cooling drinks, feather fall if you drop the plates, floating disc because it is a plate, uh, burning hands to keeping food warm and lighting candles, unseen servers because you could replace your colleagues and take all his pay, and comprehend languages for taking orders, and grease for in case they try to leave. The DM also made me make it specifically kitchen grease, which was flammable and we used it for combo attacks. As I said, what separates D&D and Minecraft from most other games is the sheer number of engagements that you can get from them. Something like League or Total War are really hard focused on one playstyle, but D&D and Minecraft are incredibly flexible in how you can play and engagements that they can evoke. What this means is that you can get anyone into it with the right push, even people who don't play video games. I, I, I want to have a campaign with, with players who are all races, who don't have the right to vote. I'm going to have them go all the way to the king of the land, stab before him, and try to convince him that they deserve the right to vote. And when, and when, <laughs> and when they finish making their case, I'm not going to say roll for persuasion. <laughs> I'm going to say roll for constitution. <laughs> That's it. That's a joke. It's very easy to put people and hobbies into their own categories based on their most superficial features of like who wants to go to outside or but it, it, it's a bit more complicated than that. Take the exploration engagement. What's the difference between it in real life and in a video game? The answer is nothing. It's the same engagement, but what is different is outside carries another engagement, sensation or sense pleasure. In short, it's the feeling of sand between your toes. Meanwhile, in games you don't have that, but you do have better access to creativity as an engagement and video game worlds can be like all levels of crazy. I, I mean, what did you expect? He carries this whole home on his back. Of course the snail is fucking jacked! People who want to go outside align with exploration and sensation. Those who don't want to leave the house probably align with exploration and creativity instead and are probably pretty numb to sensation. The whole jocks and nerd dynamics is like a hell of a lot more grey when you look at it like this. I'm very introverted and it baffled me at first when I found out a couple of my friends almost required someone to play with them when they played League of Legends, but it's probably because they align with fellowship, social interaction. And you know what? Those are the nerds who like partying and big social gatherings like conventions, where everyone's social and interacting. And then there's me like, oh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna eat this blue thing I found in the fridge. And she's like, oh no, I was saving that, Ah. Oh. <laughs> That one's not as good. Fuck you, Mike Stan. I'm comparatively much closer to a stereotypical nerd, but my alignments are that I'm super competitive and challenge oriented. I don't care much for social interaction, and I don't mind working for hours to beat a really hard boss in Dark Souls all by myself. The reward to my self image for succeeding makes me ecstatic, and that's why I'm not a neckbeard. The idea of getting fat horrifies me because I care about my self worth. I mean, why do you think I became a YouTuber? I'm innately attracted to fame to people validating me. I think even if you had the biggest ho-ass party frat boy, I think you'd find most of their enjoyment originates from spectacle, comedy, and fellowship. Just take a lighthearted approach and focus on social and team aspects of the game that has you making crazy spontaneous decisions and laughing about your choices and consequences together with a group. Hell, give them the challenge of screwing up the DM's plan and have him or the DM take a drink every time they fail to make an impact or fail to adapt respectively. And this whole concept of everyone having the same core engagements gets so much crazier the more you see these connections. Like, like, like has anyone noticed that fishing is a naturally occurring Skinner's box trap? Like, like fishing minus sensation is the same as random loot drops in an MMO. Has anyone noticed that Minecraft is basically just a digital version of the Lego craze? Uh, has anyone noticed fantasy role-playing games are a natural extension of children imagining and acting out a role? And philosophy buffs are probably tapping into the same self-expression that makes Walking Dead games work. Anyway, the point is that you can find almost all major engagements, except for maybe sensation in D&D, and given that everyone has more than one alignment, everyone can get into it. If they're social butterflies, tell them about formulating a plan with friends to break into a forbidden library. Tell them about the hijinks that turn karaoke into a city crumbling destruction. If they're into exploration, have the DM give them a map and tell them they can go anywhere. Hint about some cool landmarks. So this way gets us to go straight through Hupperduke. 
<laughs> it does. Yeah. We can stop by Hubbardo. I'm just saying. Remind me what's in Hubbardo. It's just no a funny idea. name. It's like a cool name for I a town. I imagine that all of the buildings look like mushrooms. <laughs> if they're into creative arts, show them the wizard class and tell them that they can work with the DM to further build their character into the world. And if they're into challenge, yeah, sure. Then show them the in-depth combat. I actually didn't like D&D before, but my oh snap moment was when I played a charisma heavy mage and scared away a bunch of enemies by using Mind Relusion, a spell that can only be as large as a 5 foot cube, to create a head of a dragon coming out from around a corner behind me. I was dramatically waving my arms like, oh you stepped into the wrong town motherfucker! Naturally my alignments are with challenge and creativity, and I've loved the game ever since. And you know what? Now me and that friend have something to talk about again. There's Critical Role, Lore, and DMing, and we've even started talking about totally irrelevant stuff again. We, we both bonded over our clinical depression the other day. Oh man, isn't it great how you can think about your problems some days and you're like, Oh, it was fine, it doesn't bother me. And then the next day your perspective is like, that the world is horrible, and oh man, I could just throw myself into oncoming traffic right now and just be done with it. And he's like, oh yeah, that's the best. <laughs> no joke, that's literally how that conversation went. I was kind of trying to make that seem like a happy note to end on, but, uh... No, seriously, it was good. Uh... Go play D&D.